Hello and welcome back to another reaction in this occasion, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Demon Slayer, episode 16. Yes, last time we got again, half of the episode was still fun times, still in this old house, uh, still kind of, uh, I don't know, a relaxing moment. But again, this show just takes that and goes ahead and move on. Because obviously, this is an action show. We got a story, a very interesting one. Um, and we need to move forward, says story. So obviously, we cannot stay all the while in that place, in that safe place. So we need to move to a more dangerous place. In this case, a forest full of spiders. So... Yes, as, as I mentioned in the last uh, in the last episode, I hate spiders. I cannot stand spiders. So these episodes, because I knew there were going to be more than one, are going to be my personal nightmare. I don't know how much of a spider demon we are going to see. I don't know if we're going to see the full form of a gigantic spider or something like that, or it's going to be more subtle. I, I am still not sure, but I'm getting ready for that because I know I'm going to hate these episodes. And not because of the gore or because of anything else. No, because there are spiders. And I hate spiders. But hopefully the action in the show is going to distract me from that fact. And we're going to, to have and something amazing. Uh, but anyway, I don't think you're here to hear me ramble about random shit and my fears and all of that. So let me just quickly remind you that if you enjoy the content of the channel, please consider a subscription. Turn on notifications if you want to well, keep up to date with whatever we are doing with the channel. And remember, leave a comment. So let me know what you think about my reaction, the episode or the commentary once you see it. Uh, remember that in the description we got the link for my Patreon, uh, for my Twitter, if you want to follow me there, obviously it's up to you, alongside with the Patreon, if you want to help me with that, that is up to you also. Uh, and of course, uh, we got the link for the reaction. But anyway, I am not going to eat more of all your time with this presentation, let's just cut it and watch the episode, shall we? Okay, I'm back. I just watched a second time the uh, 16 episode of the series. Again, at the beginning, you start to see the episode as a normal one, as this, obviously, trying to defeat the demon, try to move forward, uh, and all of that. But again, in the second viewing, and in the third viewing that I did, actually, uh, you start to see a little bit more, and why this, uh, this series is so successful. We know that Tanjiro makes a lot of effort. We know that Tanjiro is... Uh, is trying to progress. It, he has a goal to return uh, her humanity to his sister. That's what he wants to do. That is the ultimate goal. And unlike many other animes, or at least animes from the 90s in which you don't really see that training other than Dragon Ball, but this obviously becomes repetitive in a certain, po in a certain point, especially for Dragon Ball Z, because... Yeah, you should see, okay, villain, training, villain, training, villain, training, villain, training, and that's it. Um, they just did this. They just uh, they just gave us a training, two years of training, or three years, I don't remember. But a lot of time uh, of training, and in the end, that uh, said training is, is starting to pay off for Tanjiro, because he is the protagonist. Obviously, we are not going to see the training of everybody, because uh, that will take way too much time. Because it took us like, I don't know, to episode 9, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, obviously. Uh, up to episode 9 uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the rest, with other people. So, yes, if you imagine if we treat them like that, we will have 999 episodes for every single character that we, we see. Uh, we have Fursenitsu, will be 9 episodes. We have 18 episodes. 
uh, we have Inosuke, another nine episodes, so it's maybe 27 episodes, and all the other characters or the main characters that are still missing from uh, from the series. So that will make no sense for us. It will wait. It will be way too much for us. So we only saw the protagonist training. And there is an explanation for the rest of the powers. You kind of understand that. Where I'm going with this. I know that one of the... I don't know. One of the keys of the success of uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba. Is that. The fact that this is a hard working person. We have seen other examples uh, in these, uh, of these in other recent animes and animes that I really, really enjoy. Um, we saw that in Boku no Hero Academia. We saw the training that uh, Deku did. It was not just, okay, here is the power, not you're just overpowered. No, it actually takes, oops, it actually takes time for, uh, for Deku to reach a point in which he is a badass. Because yes, he has been a badass. And I think the most amazing badass moment he got it was until season 3 when he defeated uh, Muscular. So yes, that is the badass moment for Deku. And I think that is one of the hypest moments for Deku. Uh, that badass moment. For in power, I mean. Because yes, he has other moments in which, oh my god, he's amazing. He is sacrificing himself. Is that? But I think the most amazing and the first one with just pure strength and that quality that he has is with Muscular. That is my opinion. Obviously, you can defer from that. But we saw that training. We saw that fight. We saw that struggle. That is interest. And we saw that with another character. Uh, he's uh, the Demon School. I don't recall his name. It's been such a long time since I read the manga. But yes, the welcome to your Demon School. The name of the protagonist. I forgot his name. It's Blue Deku. That's it. Uh, we saw that, that at the beginning, when it was just comedy or pure comedy, all all the good stuff that happened to him, it was just an accident. It was just something, oh yes, he was lucky because his grandfather is the main demon or one of the strongest demons. And so he gave it a lot of advantage and all of that, oh yes. So at the beginning, when it was comedy, it is, it is fine, it is funny. But once the show and once the manga, because yes, I have read a lot of the manga of this one, uh, start to get more serious, you start to see that actually the character, the main character needs to work for whatever he wants. It's not just given to him freely. You see the struggles, you see the problems that he has. And I like that. And it's the same with Tanjiro. Tanjiro make a lot of effort to reach the point in which he is. Three or two or three years of training. A very harsh training. So this is part of the success of the show. But another amazing thing is that he is not a soulless character. He is not just, oh, yes, I'm just a killing machine and I don't care. No, actually, the show goes beyond that and points several times that Tanjiro is too nice, is too soft, or he has too soft of eyes. He has soft eyes, a very gentle face, just like his master. But that doesn't stop him from being honestly a badass. He has the feet so far, I think, oh, let's count. The amorphic demons, because those are the main ones. Those are the, the dangerous ones. The enhanced demon. Then we got the swamp demons. Let's count in like one. I know there were three, but let's say it's the same demon. So there it is. He defeated the Swamp Demon. He defeated the Arrow Demon, which is the least sympathetic one so far by the end. With him and the Swamp Demon. Then we got the Tamari Demon. So he has four. Then we have the Drum Demon, a previously 12 moon, whatever, of Musa, the main bad guys. And now six with the Spider Demon. Six demons, man. And when people said that he was way too gentle, and he is still is, 
You say, oh, but only with humans. No, we can see that in this episode that Tanjiro is still gentle when he feels that they deserve this soft side of him. He gives that side. And that's why he first went to a harsh god that is going to make the demon suffer because, well, yes, that's what's going to happen. But then mid-air, when he figured out that this demon was willing to just sacrifice, he was just going to, yeah, sure, kill me. For whatever reason, Tanjiro interpret because obviously we know the real reason, because this demon was, was just suffering so much thanks to another demon, another, I guess, a spider demon. I don't know if the, the topics are still correlated to this one. Uh, but yes, once he saw that, he modified his attack and it was a gentler way of killing this one. Because even even the, the, the spider demon said, I don't feel pain, I am not suffering, I am at peace. It, likes, it feels like a soft breeze or a soft rain. And she accepted that fate. And the last thing she saw, it was not just a demon hunter full of hate full of anger it was a gentle de a demon hunter a gentle demon hunter that was her last vision she was at peace yes she was a terrible character and yes i just start to notice that every time i say oh i want this demon to fucking die because they are awful the show does something in the end and you start to feel bad for the deep you still you start to feel like oh my god god damn it show but that what makes it another point for it for the show to be this great. Because they are giving you something else. It's not just monsters. They are giving you humanized monsters. It's it's really interesting to see all of that. It's it's honestly something commendable of this show. And all of these little things add up. And I think that is the reason behind the huge success of Demon uh, Slayer, of, of Kimetsu no Yaiba. I think it's all the combination of all of these aspects. And I love that. I love I love the show because we get action, but we have uh, sympathetic characters, three-dimensional characters. We, we, get, we get a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff here. And yes, I know this is not something I should comment, but yeah, you can start to see why manga is starting to go ahead of comics way way ahead of comics i mean yeah just kimetsu no yaiba which is honestly of the last time i checked is the biggest seller of manga in japan just in japan is selling millions hundreds of millions of copies hundreds of millions of copies man. while the best selling comic in america is selling like i don't know a million and that is the big seller that is the big one the rest of the comics are happy if they reach a hundred thousand but yeah it sounds a lot until you start to take uh, take away the cost of the production and the cost of everything that doesn't sound that well so yes you start to understand why they are telling you compelling stories because yes it's a basic story let's say the goal is relatively simple but the characters is what make this interesting so yes i love this this episode because it opened my eyes to something that i really need to say and i think i haven't mentioned this before uh, why the success of the show thanks to the main characters and the support characters obviously speaking about the support characters i love how inasuke is just saying oh yes whatever i do can do i can do better and he's trying to push himself so hard because he sees tanjiro as this amazing person because Yes, he is Tanjiro, really is amazing. Uh, but he is still respecting Tanjiro. I don't, I don't know if he understands that he respects Tanjiro. I don't, I don't know if Inosuke understands it because, yeah, his mind is a more simpler one, thanks to the way he was raised, or at least what I think, how I think he was raised. Uh, so yeah, I, I like that aspect that he understands deep in his, in his gut that he respects Tanjiro still not understand that fact but he respects him and yes i like that aspect i like how inosuke is slightly changing for the better for a lot better because as you remember the first time i saw him say oh he's a douchebag but now you start to see something else in here 
And obviously, Zenitsu. Zenitsu didn't have much of a screen time in this one. And not a very different one. He's still crying and he's still kind of a coward. But I guess we're going to see him in action. I don't know if in the next episode, but at least in the few next episodes. Because yes, one of the spider demons is coming after him. The one that is just, I guess, a head and, he and heads and legs. Which is going to be absolutely disgusting. And I know Merkel, perhaps they're going to make me feel sympathetic for this one. But I cannot wait for him to be dead. <laughs> Honestly, and yes, in the next show, so, oh no, he was a monk and a priest and he helped orphans and all something like that. So, yes, I'm waiting for that moment. Uh, anyway, oh yes, there is almost something I forgot. You can start to see the difference between low ranks and high ranks of uh, of demon corpse, of the demon slayer corpse. Sorry, the high ranks, I guess, they are very powerful. We haven't seen anybody fight a demon in his full potential. We were close with Ginyu, but obviously for for the, for the plot reasons, we couldn't see that. But you start to see this difference, because obviously the protagonist is Tanjiro. You know that if everything goes well for him, uh, he is going to become one of the high rankings of this association. At least that's what I hope. I hope for a happy ending, honestly. But you start to see the reaction of the rest of the demon hunters, of the demon slayers. That they are strong, yes. But when they saw Tanjiro and his water breathing, they said, oh my god, this guy is way too strong. Like, how the hell does he do that? You start to see surprise and you start to see understanding the context of the show. In the context of the people. Hell, even in the context of the corpse. You start to see Tanjiro as somebody special. And not only him. You start to see that Senitsu is special, that Inosuke, Inosuke is special, that they are something else. They are, they are different. And even within the corpse, you can start to see that. It is a fascinating thing to understand, because you start to see that yes, perhaps they have more strength or more ability than a normal person. This layer corpse the members of the Slayer Corps. But even among them, there are people that are go beyond that. People like Tanjiro, like Inosuke, like Zenitsu. Because we have seen Zenitsu in action, obviously not in this episode, but we have seen him. So you start to understand a little bit more about that. And I cannot wait to see more action from our three main guys. I want to see that. But anyway, I think I exhausted the topic of this one. I, I hope you enjoy it. And I cannot wait to see the next one. But anyway, I don't want to bore you anymore. Just let me quickly remind you that if you enjoy the content of the channel, please consider a subscription and turn on notifications so you can get up to date with whatever we're doing with the channel. Uh, if you enjoy the video, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment so I know what you think about my reaction, the episode or the commentary in general. Uh, remember that in the description we have a link for my Twitter, if you want to follow me, it's there. Uh, a link for my Patreon, if you want to see the uncut reaction of this episode and many more, uh, please check it out. And obviously, uh, yes, obviously the link for the reaction, I almost forgot. But obviously if you are here, you already knew that, so I shouldn't worry about this one. Anyway, yes, I think that's it, I hope you enjoy it, and well, see you on the next one. Bye! Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, give it a like, so the algorithm from YouTube will help me out. And check my other videos, share them, and also, why not subscribe to my channel, and join this community. And as always, I want to thank you for your attention, your likes, and even your dislikes. Your comments, which is something I always look forward to read, and yeah, once more, thanks, and see you on the next one.